Well, welcome to the birthday episode where he was a birthday boy a few days ago. I'm a birthday boy in a few days. And this is Tom, my bestie. We have been homies for our entire lives. And literally, we have been friends since we were two weeks old. There's some pretty awesome pics of us uh, lurking on the floor in little white clothes. And so in this episode, Tom is going to interview me about what I do, why, and it's going to be kind of personal. Maybe. We'll just see what happens. Over to you, Tom. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> um, okay, so my first question is, um, in your, through your music and your healing work and the sort of 20, no, 30 even years that you've been engaged with questions around both, at this point, who do you feel that those skills and experiences and knowledge can be of most benefit for? Yeah, thank you. So I think, you know, I've trod a long road and that includes being on squillions of stages, messing it up. I've made infinite mistakes in all directions, um, but also lived a really lit rich life as a musician, healer, music producer, but also been obsessed with healing, spiritual awakening or consciousness or whatever else it is. And I've experienced the best and the worst of all of that. I've experienced being on big stages and absolutely, and being really good at it. And I've also been on the same stages and really messed up in front of 25,000 people and lived in a vat of boiling shame. And the same has happened within this kind of spiritual and healing journey that's maybe been the last 25 years where I've experienced the worst of it, uh, which is sometimes deeply unethical teachers and the kind of madness that goes on out there. And then the best of it, ethical, um, kind of healing. Now, of course, I made your question all about me, and your question was, in fact, all about who it might help. <laughs> so I'm going to direct it there. So really wh what my work uh, is aimed at, or the people it's aimed at, is folk who have got issues with their voice, and that can be speaking or singing. So that can be a shutdown singing voice where my voice is never good enough, where I can't sing in tune, all the way through to people who've got issues speaking. And that might be, I just blurt it all out, and I hurt, and then I shut down, and, and I lose friends to people who just really struggle to show up socially or at work and for whom their voice is like their biggest obstacle or just a huge um, thing that shuts them down from succeeding or just flowering and enjoying their lives. And then really to kind of cap it all off, I work with a lot of people, I suppose mentoring them through trauma and um, enlivening and uh, helping them kind of awaken their consciousness beyond this problem-based little me into a kind of a flowering of into a more enjoyable life. And uh, as you and I both know, in our 20s, you know, in, when we were younger, life is much more complicated and we don't, there's a lot of stuff you don't know. And, and I've done a lot of training around that and I really care about working with people and it's very close to my heart to, I, I just love working with people and helping people. And that helps me and that makes me feel good. So it's one fulfilling circle. Something like that. <laughs> More specifically, what sort of tools do you use when to, to help people around both the voice-based stuff and possibly deeper traumatic issues? So the two are very much related. Thanks, T. So for working with voices, I have a whole program uh, based around the, the, the practices that I'll call vocal liberation practices. And these include on the one side, if you're brought up in a culture that shames voices and where only perfect singers sing and every all the rest of us don't really sing, what happens is that these muscles atrophy and we don't we haven't built up stamina dexterity and confidence in our voices and you'll find for example in in south african culture there's a lot of singing and group singing where people sing all the time not in my culture though so anyway there's a whole lot of practical tools for learning to provide dexterity and freedom and a little bit of joy in the voice but then there's the whole thing about vocal blocks where you get shut down as a child um, and this happens to a lot of the people who come in my program. And then we have to do deeper trauma-based work. And I, I will tend to work with um, I would, you know, transformation coaching, which is kind of an energy-based coaching pro um, process, plus 
TRE, trauma and tension releasing exercises, and somatic, in other words, body-based healing practices, as well as EFT. There are sort of many acronyms here, which is emotional freedom technique. So I work with a series of techniques, whatever's gonna work in the moment, to essentially help people release what I'd call traumatic memory or um, traumatic belief systems that, that get embedded in us. In other words, I'm useless or I can't sing or it's not safe for me to speak. It's not safe for me to be in groups, which are the kind of things that get lodged in people and that's then becomes their behavior. That's how I am for life unless we change it. So those are the kind of tools. Does that answer it or did that not quite answer it? Yeah, I think that answers it. I mean, I'm... So can, how, how, look, so on the one hand, can you do something as simple as basically just helping someone be a better singer? I can. I mean, I think that there are probably better teachers out there on a simply, I need technical um, advice around how to sing like Justin Timberlake. Um, that's just not my gig. There are lots of people who are brilliant at that. My interest and focus is I can feel that there are emotional uh, and anxiety related issues around my singing and I've shut down. How do I open up this instrument when it closes when I'm standing up in front of people or even the thought of being in front of people terrifies me. So I often work with singers who have become shut down. So they've, they've been for all the training, but in spite of that, there's in here and there's an and then quite quickly in one for example one-on-one -on -one session we might end up at that exact point that their mother relentlessly told the daughter you're too much you're too much you're too much just shut up you know it's like the classic situation of a single mother kind of trying to manage all the things and the daughter is just a vibey teenager kind of who's got issue who's got mother issues just because they're a kid and then that mother just kind of relentlessly shuts the daughter down and it's kind of not her fault, but that's what happened, you know? And so you do the work and decode this constriction that sits there and in the rest of the body. So based on that, then it's not only for people who sing. It's absolutely not only for people who sing. Like a lot of the people who come in my courses and one-on-ones uh, really struggle to show up for themselves in business and in relationships, so struggle with boundaries. But equally, there's also another portion of it. I, I would call this unblocking self-expression because the, exactly the same patterns will show up online. I can spot them from miles away. You can see, you go onto someone's social media profile and there are no, you'll never see pictures of them. They'll generally be hiding online and it's the same thing that they'll do socially and at work. And so the whole thing then becomes a kind of a self-defeating pattern, which is I'm always hiding and never putting myself forward into the world. Um, and so I'll, I'll stay small. And, and, and people really struggle with that. There's just a lot of it. Those are my questions. <laughs> <laughs> Those are your questions. <laughs> That's it. Questions. Well, I could also ask you about the future and what plans you have for 2021, because 2020 was such a humdinger. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so, yes, what plans do you have for 2021? Because I know you ran your course, I think, three times in 2020. Um, and obviously sort of growing, growing that. But I also know that you've been doing a lot of your own research and, and, and sort of growing your knowledge base. So I'm curious as to how you plan to integrate the various learnings you have picked up into whatever is coming up ahead. Thanks, homie. Um, so yeah, 2021, I'm going to be doing the course twice. I just want to have a bit of a slower year and then also to see my one-on-one -on -one clients. I, I really adore one-on-one -on -one work. Um, it's just personal and I can work with someone very directly, but I also love the courses. But anyway, so looking after my one on ones and then I'm studying a lot. I'm studying a lot of vocal technique and vocal pedagogy um, to really just keep learning more and more about the technicalities of how this all works. Plus, I'm studying clinical EFT and energy psychology, you know, just I think just in a constant process of um, deepening my knowledge, as well as a lot of mindfulness and meditation stuff that I am deeply studying uh, on an ongoing basis, while being in clinical supervision with my psychologist supervisor. So it's just a huge push to keep it responsible, keep deepening the work that I do um, and do it better. 
um, the, the weird thing about what I do is that I can't really find other people who do what I do. So I'm kind of developing this exact niche, but that means I've really, I've got to keep on working out what it is and how to be effective at it. And it's not always a f obvious, like I, I can encounter a new client and every session is a, a process of discovery. So working with my clients is actually half of the journey of me discovering how to help them and which is kind of awesome, but it's also like I feel deeply responsible to uh, not mess it up. <laughs> <Just very good>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in 2021, I also I, I'm intent on making more music this year. So I'm researching a lot of vocal only music and choir music and aspects of African music, but also other uh, international forms of, of sung music because I, I really like as soon as we can get together in crowds again I just want us to sing and move together and um, have fun have a party have a singing party in a good way <laughs> <Yeah>. tequila <laughs> nah. when last did you have a tequila Tom oh that would be Wednesday when I was <laughs> soon after I turned 50 right <laughs> I last had a tequila I think in 2000 and maybe 18 or 17. They still taste good. They still taste good. <laughs> <laughs> so are they, do you think we've got that? Do you think that just is? Yeah, I mean, I could just say that I think that at some point you should watch however many million people are watching your channel. You should show them a little bit of where you live. Oh, yes. Because I came up just for the night and I feel restored, yo. Mm. Rejuved. He has slept like a <laughs> slot. Like he good. had a big nap. We had a big breakfast. A big and walk. Oh, hills, rivers. Oh, yeah. So good. Like this section, I could just put into the Insta stories for all the people that know about <laughs> 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 so, um, it. Just like a little cut. Yours. Yeah, we got to hang out. We and, did. And also, just for the sake of the, because we're recording this, this is the short period of the year where he is one year older than me yep. just for one week he's now 50 and then I turn 50 on Monday 50, 50. mother <laughs> totally calm about it totally accurate <laughs> yeah, but, totally but also it's kind of mind blowing because <laughs> we're still teenagers we're, we're still very much, we, we are teenagers yes you know it feels like being teenagers and 20 somethings and 30 it's like all the ages yes. you know like but it starts around teendom yeah <laughs> Exactly. Except when I'm really sad, because then I'm four. <laughs> <laughs> true that, I mean, true that. Is it four? I think it's four. Yeah, it's four. It's four. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So thank you, dear friend, for interviewing me. Um, I don't really have much more to say. If you have anything that you want to know, drop a comment below. Uh, you can also check out the website uh, and there's a link to a free vocal freedom guide if you're interested in that, also linked below. And I'm just really grateful that this human exists. Um, just to really share that what it's like is having like safe person uh, to know as your friend for your whole life. Like, and just knowing that like friendship and other humans are safe actually because it's this is clearly true so other ones must be true what he said <laughs> cool <laughs> <laughs>